Hey there, we're out crabbing today, myself and hey, Quentin. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, what we're gonna do is we're out in Port Townsend and throwing some crab pots. I got the last pot to go in, but I wanted to show you kind of the system that I use to make it easier every time I go out. It's super simple and everybody has a million different ways of doing it, but I hope you enjoy this one. So check it out. About a few things here. Number one, bait bags. They have the metal ones. I've used those, those work really well. I've used the plastic ones like the sleeves, but those sleeves, they get torn up really fast. These are the ones that uh, I saw on a YouTube video, so I tried them out, and these guys work great. It's like the crabs really don't chew them up. It holds the bait, easy to use. So the back just opens up, throw in your chicken, salmon, can of cat food, whatever it might be. That just holds it well. This clips to the top inside of here, inside the crab uh, pot, and then I just cable tie the bottom so it doesn't go back and forth and maybe block a, a gate for them to get in and it holds it in the middle. So these are the ones I recommend, super simple to use, really great. So when we come over to our crab pot over here, let me show you what I've done on this. I've got a 15 foot boat and so I only have so much room. So I break these down every time I go in and out, but I've got them set up so that they're really fast. Everything goes to the middle. And this pot right here, is a type that uh, does not have an opening on the top to get in, but uh, it works really, really well as far as just pulling these guys up and opening them. I have this side and this side pretty well cinched down, and these guys are the ones that come up and down so that I know what, which side to get into, and I mark the ones that I am, I'm taking on and off with these little uh, cable ties so I know which ones to use. The other thing that I like to point out too is, let's see, I probably see it, this one's better. What I do is, I, in the past, I've gone out and let the, pot, uh, the pots soak and come back and had no crab. And then I've seen YouTube videos and what happens is, with the tides and the currents go by, it actually will sweep the cage or the, uh, the gate up. And when it sweeps the gate up, the crabs actually crawl back out. So I saw somebody and I thought it was fairly brilliant. What they did was they just got, these are the, uh, like you'd get on uh, uh, tires for balancing wheels. And so I just clipped these guys on and then they're a lot heavier. So it's still super simple for them to get in, but a lot more weight so that they don't flare out as if they were, um, what am I trying to say? As if they didn't have the weights there. The other thing about the pot is, I've got a five pound weight in each one of my pots, and that's just so it doesn't drift away. If you don't have any weight, unfortunately, the ties and currents, seaweed catches on your line, and it will just sweep it down, so all of a sudden you're on a ledge, and you have 100 feet of line, and it sweeps it down, and now all of a sudden, the pot's sitting there, the line's up, the float, but it's 20 feet underwater, and you'll never find it. Next thing to remember, too, is on crab pots, there's always this sacrificial ring. And with the sacrificial ring, you always have it tied off with cotton string. Nothing else, no other, no other synthetics. You want this thing, if, if this pot, if you lose it, you want these things to eventually deteriorate and fall off so this ring falls away and the crabs can get off, get out. I picked up a, 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 a pot that was buried underneath the water for I don't know how long, and it came up, somehow I grabbed it on mine, pulled it up. There were seven crab inside and this sacrificial ring was zip tied. So those crabs, not only were they gonna eventually die, but it was gonna just keep grabbing crabs. So uh, always make sure that's done. Also on my crab pots, there's all sorts of different ways to do this. I've seen them where they just have two and it makes them unbalanced. I like to have all four sides, but I just do the tie off here. I tie them off here and then I just put a shackle in the middle because once again, I tear these down every time I go out and this just works really well for attaching. Next on the list, lead line. On my lead line, what I do with this is, I'll go ahead and take and do a bowling and then I tape it off because obviously we just wanna make sure it doesn't come undone. Plenty of strength, pull, but you just wanna make sure that you, you tape it off so that it holds it so it can't come undone because this stuff can be really slippery line. 
The other thing I do is I put on two of these carabiners, one one way, one the other. If I just have one and somehow this breaks, I'm gonna lose it. So I have two. When they go on, one goes this way, one goes this way, and as you can tell, that is never gonna come off. And once again, super simple to take it off and make it back up. On the other side, I just have a bowen. And once again, the bowen and where the, the cattail end is, just go ahead and tape it so I just have this. That brings me to my floats. A lot of, when I first started, just had the red float, red and white float like everybody has, but it's hard to find. Once it starts to get over a half a foot of chop, they're really hard to find. Then you go out and you pull it up and you find it's not yours or it's drifted 100 feet this way, 100 feet that way, and you just can't find it. So the first year what I did was I had my float and then I went ahead and put on a fender. I figured that's gonna be plenty to find it. And of course on my fender, I put my name, address and everything, just like you're required to do on your float. But then I still was still having trouble finding it because it just, you know, it just laid low in the water. So then when I came up with this thing, <laughs> so this is one of the best things I did. Uh, it's just one of those 99 cent Walmart noodles. You run a line through it, you tie it in a knot, tie it off here and connect it. And now when this thing sits down, it actually sits up in the water a little bit, green, and you're looking at this entire thing out in the water, much easier to find. The other thing is you're gonna see, I have four of these guys, four big cable ties at the top. On each one of my floats, because I have four, or four, you're allowed to have four pots per boat. So I have them marked with one, two, three, and four cable ties. So when I pick one up, um, because you can get turned around, and sometimes I find that I was picking up the same pot I just picked up because they're kind of drifting different ways. Now when I go out, when I pick this pot up, if this is the first one, I go, okay, number four, I just picked it up. Then I go around and I pick up, say, the one that has two on it or one on it. I come back and I look and I go, well, that's number four. I've already checked that one. Let it just keep soaking. So put on one, two, three, four cable ties on your four different floats, and that way you can make a note of it and you're not pulling up the same pot checking it while the other one's been soaking for three hours and you haven't checked it. The other thing too is, on the float, I put a washer put a piece of PVC through it because what happens if you just put a washer of the line, I guarantee it just starts ripping through. This is just foam. And so I find that this, I've had this one for like three years and it still looks brand new because I've got a knot, a washer, the PVC going through it and it absolutely doesn't get chewed up. Then I just have it tied to this, to this, to this. And on this end, what I have I forgot what these are called, a little carabiner, but it just opens this way, then the line goes in here. So remember I said on this one, these go to the top of this. This one gets hooked to your floats. This goes out, clips in there, and I guarantee that holds it. This doesn't need a lot of strength because it's not really pulling out, and it has plenty of strength, it's not coming out but when I get, when I put everything away inside the boat, this comes off, my floats are free, the line's made up, I release this, these guys pull down, pull down, and now I've got my pots folded, my bags emptied over the side, I've got my float, I've got my line, and that's the way it breaks down. I stack all four of my pots up and I put um, just a tie around it and uh, like a ratchet strap, lock it down. So now they're all flat and held in my little 15 foot boat. All the lines are put together. They're all banded. So when I take them up, I know I have one. Then these guys just live wherever I can put them. One other thing I wanted to mention, it's always something I forget. When it comes to your lead line, I go ahead and buy it in 400 foot spools. And then what I do is I do two 200 foot shots or two 200 foot pieces of the lead line. I know that most people were only fishing in 75 or 100 feet, but it used to be I'd have 125 feet. 
and I'd be in about 100, and it would get swept out off a ledge. It would just drift down, and now all of a sudden, it's gone down 20 or 30 feet. So the pot's there, the line's going up, the float's there, but it's 10 feet under the water. I'm never gonna find it. So I've decided for me, since I have got a pot puller and I'm not having to pull them up by hand, uh, that I go with 200 feet on every single one of my When we toss it out, that's what we'll be looking for. All right, we got our pots in the water, we're soaking, and so we're gonna go explore a little bit. We're leaving Port Townsend. This is Maristone Island. There's a bridge that connects Maristone Island to the mainland. And here's Q, very nervously driving his first time. So Quinn's gonna grab it, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull it in, and we'll see what we got. Perfect. Yep, you hold it, hand it to me. All right, I got kind of a small boat here, but what I do is I take this guy here, try not to get Quentin wet, but I put this up in front of me. Here's my pot puller. Be looking for the pot to uh, get close to the surface because then I turn it off and pull it up by hand. Right. It's right here. There we go. Socks! One little baby. Yeah, and it's a rock crab. Yeah. All right. Well, a little frustrating, but this is what happens when you crab. Look, he doesn't want to let go. He's got my bait. <laughs> All right, there's your first one. It's a little, uh, it's a little male because it's uh, not round. It's here, just a little uh, rock crab. So off he goes. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, change spots and see if we can get on the crab. <laughs> All right, so we got three crab today. I want to show you a really fast way to go ahead and crack them. Really simple. Take Mr. Crab, put him this way. Sorry, buddy. All right, then you take these guys. Come around here if you would. Find the surface. We have all the legs held. Take off the lungs. And they can still pinch you, be careful. <laughs> That's it. Let me show you another one. Grab all the legs, make sure they still don't pinch you. Hold it out and you're going right for the middle. It's better if you have something a little bit sharper in the middle. Break it out, break it out. Pull up the lungs. And last one. All right. This way. Going to go right to the middle. Pull out one side. Crack out the other side. Dig off the lungs, part of the face. That's it. Easy peasy.